Hello everyone and welcome back to Star Wars The Force Unleashed on Steam. I am Mark Wild Sheep yet again and today we are going to be moving through Raxus Prime, I think the name of the world is called, I could be wrong, but as you can see by here we have a new force ability in our arsenal, we have the ability to shoot lightning bolts from our fingertips. Now I'll tell you what, this move is absolutely amazing, do you know why? Well because it's a, uh, it electrocutes enemies, you know, they see you coming and needless to say, There'll be more than a shocked expression on their face, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but anyway, to use Force Lightning, it's just like um, Darth Vader's Force Choke in the first world. Basically, press the tri triangle, the Y button. Well, I guess if you're using the PlayStation controller, it would be triangle, but press the Y button to use it, and yeah, you shoot lightning bolts. Now, the level 1 Force Lightning is pretty damn... Naff, shall we say? It's pretty awful. You can only shoot out one burst of electricity, and it kind of, it kind of, it's it's not not that good. Ah, <laughs> uh, but um, it, you know, you gotta be careful with where the enemies coming up, because there's all all these enemies coming up by here, like these scrap guys. They are very very weak to the force lightning. It is it's still wise to use it even in its ultra weak waste of time form because. Well, obviously, it electrocutes enemies. It still stuns them for a little bit, leaves them open, and things like that flying thingy there. Scavenger skip. I think that's what they are. They go down in one hit with a force lightning, so you're going to be making. You're going to be using it quite a lot in this level. And we've also unlocked a new ability which allows us to infuse our lightsaber with the force electricity, electricity attack. Which is basically that Sith Saber Smash move you just saw me use. Now that move, in a, if I were to LP this game years ago, I would consider that move to be the reason, you know, that ge that that move would be me beating the game basically back in the day. However, in this day and age, it's not as useful as I remember it. This the other Sith electricity move is a lot more useful, I find, but. We're going to be seeing that quite a bit later down the line. Basically, press the X button twice, and then press the Y button twice, and you'll activate the Saber Smash, which is still amazing. It's still ultra-powerful. It wipes out enemies like nothing, but, you know. Anyway, time for a little bit of platforming. Yay! And with the platforming, it brings one of my biggest issues with this um, game. Well... It's not that big an issue because it is very easy to get around, but the stage is where my, that issue is most prevalent for me. Basically, there's no depth perception. If you don't know what you're doing, you, you, you won't be able to tell where you're jumping. It's, it's very difficult to tell how far it, something is and whether you can reach a certain distance when you're jumping to it. You know, it's depth perception is your enemy, folks. It's like Crash Bandicoot 1, except without the platforming controls. Anyway, if you're wondering why, how you're meant to get through this area, basically you're going to see these little things. I've been electrocuting through my progression. I've been electrocuting them, and they've been shooting off and breaking this hole, you know, this wall. Uh, just, there's three or four of them lying around on the floor. Just electrocute two of them, I believe, and you'll be able to progress on. You could go for the third one, just like I did, but you know. Anyway, hey, that, that's a familiar weapon. Uh, it's an X-Wing. What's an X-Wing doing here? I have no idea, because uh, the Rebel Alliance hasn't actually been formed or anything yet, so why... Actually, yeah, why is there an X-Wing here? Was there like a prototype version or they just sort of abandoned? I don't know. Hey, it's everyone's favorite Jawa! Now, if you press the A and X button, you'll be able to do a grab, a grab move like that, and I love doing the grab move, to, grab move on these Jawas, because... <laughs> he don't, I don't know, it just looks so... It looks so cruel, but it's amazing, because he just sort of grabs him by the hand, legs him, and then boots him like he's... Like Jawa's some kind of football, you know? Ah, shocking, isn't it? Be gone with you! <laughs> Touchdown and the like, and yes! I actually don't know how... I don't know the rules to American football, to be... I'm gonna be perfectly honest, because... I live in Wales, you know. Uh, the sport of the day over here is rugby. We don't, we don't know what this football nonsense is all about. Hell, I, I don't even know what this soccer nonsense is about. And 
soccer in this country is called football. Okay, why did they change the name in this country from soccer to football? Because I know the name of the sport is originally football. Did we change it in s just to spite the Americans or something? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it suits the name more, actually, because you do use your feet and you do kick the ball, but... Welcome to Star Wars The Force Unleashed, where we talk about football and its origins. You know, this is important Star Wars lore, you know? You need to know the origins of football. But anyway, that fancy little combo over there is the Sith... The, the Sith? The Sith... Saber flurry. Like I said, you tap the X button in a certain way. Basically, you wait a second after each hit, and you'll, you know, before you push the X button the next time. So you push X, wait a second, push X again, wait a second, push X again. And there's no re in terms of strength, there's no real different from your normal combo. It just it looks neater, you know. At least I think there's no strength difference anyway. I don't know what's a strength difference. To be honest, I never, I can't even tell. Most of the attacks in this game sort of do the same damage from what I know, apart from force moves which sort of destroy an enemy. Yeah, that's beside the point. Anyway, these pillars by here, you're going to want to force pull them downwards because otherwise the molten metal that's dripping from the ceiling will drip on you. And that's no good! Because if that touches you, well you're going to get hurt, isn't it? It's molten metal, it's not... I don't know, it's not ice cream. Juno, I'm not sure what if I'm it was ice cream, that would be quite here? interesting. But anyway, you see those um, blue glowy skeletal enemies? They're quite possibly the most annoying enemy type in this entire game, and fortunately they are only really in this world, this one level. And these are golems, ladies and gentlemen, as in, yes, as in the type of golem that gets a lot of things together and makes itself bigger. That's what these things are, and... Obviously, they're made of junk. Now, why are these things coming out of the ground, teleporting, and trying to take us down? What will it be finding out at the end of the level, believe it or not? But seriously, this, these things are the most annoying enemy type in the game. They tend to gang up on you. If you don't have a charged up force lightning power, what's going to happen is they're going to gang up on you, and it's going to be an absolute nightmare. So what you're going to want to do is shock them and then use your Sith Saber Smash because that's your best tactic to take these guys out. It does a massive load of damage to them. And uh, yeah. Because I don't know what I'm doing here because I am going to want to take out all the enemies in this area because otherwise good luck. Good luck me progressing if I can't kill these guys, you know? Anyway, these Greedo guys, I actually don't know the name of them. I always call them Greedo because they're the same race as him. They're not that big an enemy. They're kind of like they're just kind of like um, the stormtroopers in the previous level. They shoot at you, and honestly, that's all she brought. They're, they're literally just stormtroopers with a different skin. I think the AI is a little bit different as well. Like they sort of have different behaviors. But other than that, it's... I don't know. But anyway, you might have noticed that when I was hitting that door there, that um, the door sort of. It sort of went in a tiny bit, you know? It looked like it crumbled in a tiny tad. Well, just force push it, and what do we find? A compressed lightsaber crystal! Now, the, there's two... There's basically three types of lightsaber crystals you can find. You can either find compressed, uncompressed, or just generic. Now, the generic lightsaber crystal is like the lightsaber we're holding right now, the normal red one, you know? It's just a normal beam. Now, the compressed ones will have some sort of, like, um... They'll have like a flicker, so an interesting flicker effect on them. And uncompressed will have an even crazier flicker effect, if I remember correctly. So, uh, yeah, there's that. Anyway, what we're going to want to do by here is grab one of these floating things uh, floating by, electrocute it, which will open up the pathway in here, allowing us to progress further with the level. You know, this stage actually took me quite a long time on my first playthrough to get through, because I used to, I kept common sense things just wouldn't work. I had no idea what I was doing. And a lot of these markers when I played the game went on the map. Like this little yellow dot right now telling me where to go. On my first playthrough that wasn't there. I don't know if there was a glitch or something or maybe an update added them. But I'm assuming it might have been a glitch because I can't imagine them not having that as a default feature in the game, you know? But then again you have things like you have games like Sonic Lost World where the ability to gain extra lives when collecting 100 MacGuffins that are in every game in the series had to be added with an update, so I don't know. Anyway, 
You're gonna want to take out the scavenger skips as well. Whenever you get um, things popping up on the screen, whenever you do a certain action, you want to accomplish that mission because that gives you more points to spend in your level up thingy. And if you level up, well, obviously you get stronger. The stronger you get, the more you'll be able to destroy people, and the more people you can destroy. And what the heck? Okay, so th that gigantic cursor was for a tiny thing that... Uh, oh, okay, game. Okay, whatever. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't just take it with me, though. I could have used it to take down these goons, because, like I said, these enemies are my least favorite enemy type in the game. They just... Actually, no, that's a lie. They're my second least favorite. I forgot all about a certain enemy type later on that can be pretty much immune to your force powers. So they're my second least favorite in the game. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> uh, hey, Jawas, what's up? Hadouken! Oh, okay, the Hadouken killed one of them because my aim went off. Well, la dee da game, see if I care. I, d I like Jawas, though. I mean, as much of a... Considering all of them are pretty much pricks, they're, they're trying to hit you for no reason. You know, they're, they're cute. Look at them. They're so adorable. I want a pet Jawa. At least then they can probably scrounge me a couple of quid and oh my god! Yeah, you can actually rip apart the doors using your lightsabers like that, but I don't recommend it because for some reason the physics on the door gets really screwed up when you try it. As you saw by there when the entire thing was clipping through the walls and it was, it was having a seizure. I was like, oh god, what are you doing? What are you doing? Why are you doing this to me? Nah. The physics engine doesn't like it basically. Which is strange, because the physics engine likes you doing that with every other thing in the game. It's just that particular door. Also, these are the length of the load times, ladies and gentlemen. They take about... They can take up to 30 seconds in length. On both the console and PC versions. Now, the PC version, I know is in my hard drive causing that to take a long time. Because I've played games before, like Sonic Generations and... World of Warcraft, and load time is pretty much instantaneous. So, you know, I know it's not just me, and plus I've seen other people complaining about the load times, so... It isn't my hard drive folks causing the long load times in this one, which is good. Because that can't happen when you have a PC version of the game. If you have too slow a hard drive, sometimes the load time will take a long time. Or if your RAM is too slow, so it doesn't... Whoa, that was flashy. <laughs> uh, but anyway, just taking down all these goons and Bob's your uncle. Honestly, these, um, I don't understand how that weapon that I use that caused a massive surge of electricity in the area. I don't know how they work. Sometimes I can pull them off and they just do a massive area of effect damage that annihilates everyone like you saw. And sometimes they just sort of do nothing, so I don't know. Anyway, our way backwards is blocked. I don't understand why they did that. It's not really impeding our progress or anything. We, we don't really want to go backwards for anything. Because, let's face it, there's nothing back there. <laughs> it's a very linear game, folks. If you get lost, then I don't know what to say. You'll eventually find your way no matter what, because I, I can't mock you for getting lost, because I got lost before in this game, but... You know, I wasn't... I wasn't that... I'll, I'll openly admit, I'm not that good at this game. I mean, I do fine. I'm playing this on normal difficulty, but... I, t I, you know, the, the, I, can, I can't really mock people whenever they do stupid stuff in this game, because I do them all the time. I always get lost, despite the fact there's a very clearly marked arrow telling me the direction in which I'm meant to go. I don't know. Anyway, it's time to stop messing around with the Java. Stop messing around past me, what are you doing? Oh, okay, I'm trying to use that move. Basically, if you grab hold of an enemy whenever... Oh, when, whenever you grab hold of an enemy, is this it? if you grab hold of an enemy, that's what I'm trying to say, and press the, the Y button, you'll be able to electrocute them. Electrocuting said enemy will allow you to throw the enemy at other enemies, and it'll act like a grenade, and it'll just shoot out an absurd of sparks, and it's all good and dandy. I like it. It's all really swell. Not the most useful thing in the world, but it does its job, you know? Anyway, I'm very fortunate that that enemy started shooting at me because otherwise this this um, holocron here I probably wouldn't have picked up because I wouldn't have noticed it. So thank you enemy placement. For 
some reason I always expect that lift to be really fast. I don't know why. It's a really slow lift, but whenever I replay the game, I always remember it being an extremely speedy lift. Maybe it's faster in the Xbox version? I don't know. Ah, uh, that's beside the point. Oh my god, he just got, disin he just got disintegrated. Mother of God. Anyway, what are you going to want to do by here is because, as you saw earlier on, there's a gigantic force field blocking our pathway. So what do we do to solve the crisis of the force field? Well, there's a big blue thing on the map. You see that thingy there? Just push it towards you. Or, well, I recommend killing the enemies first before pushing it towards you, because otherwise the enemies are going to be whittling your health down to dirty amounts, and that's no good. And plus, we found another scavenger skiff to take down, so there's that. Now, scavenger, scavenger skiffs, the, the best way you usually take them down is by using your force moves, but if you can't reach them with your force move, grab one of these things, electrocute them, and it will propel the thingy into the, sh the skiff blowing it up and calling it a thingy because I have I actually have no idea what they're called they're like capsules or something I don't know some form of capsule they just float around one just exploded Blair see and there's one Blair blowing that thing up what is it <laughs> I know what the thing that got blown up is that's a shield generator but what is what are those capsule things what is their purpose why do they exist Actually, they, look, they kind of look like plane turbines, don't they? So, screw it, I'm going with plane turbines. That is exactly what they are. It explains why they propel off when you electrocute them, because the engine starts up. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. But yeah, by the end of this level, I am going to recommend one thing, though. You're going to want to get your force lightning ability pushed up to full power. And... Why am I leaving already? There's a full, there's a holocron behind me. Why didn't I pick it up? Oh, well, you guys can probably quite easily see where that holocron was if you watch back the footage anyway. Uh, you don't need me to show them all off, you know. But basically, by the end of this level, you're gonna want to upgrade your force lightning because the boss fight, basically, from this point on, the boss fights man are mandatory for you to have a good force lightning in order for you to clear them. Because otherwise, good luck. And there's also a mini boss coming up that you're gonna want to have the have the ability for as well. I think I upgrade my um, lightning ability just in time for the mini bosses coming up. So there's that. Because as you saw, when I was trying to take out that enemy Blair, I had to mash the button and I had to keep zapping him, and it, it took a while. Now that I've upgraded it, because I just did it now, you just hold down the button. You can provide a constant stream of electricity and. Ooh, it's an electrifying experience that I wouldn't want. I wouldn't wish on my worst enemies. All my minor enemies, sure, I'd wish on them, but not my worst enemies. Oh no, you're gonna have some class <laughs> when fighting your worst enemies. Now that move by there, the aerial strike, I've never been able to pull it off. Ever. So, don't ask me how it works, I don't know. <laughs> it's weird. And with that move by there, the Sith Slash, I'm kind of slapping myself for not getting it earlier on in the playthrough because that Sith Slash ability is so good. Oh, it's so good. It really is. Anyway, Lightning Bomb by here is... Eh, it's a move. <laughs> Basically, you electrocute someone and then push RT, and what, what happens is you sort of cause an implosion of electricity on them. It's It looks cool. It's not exactly the most useful thing in the world, but it looks cool. And that is the main thing, ladies and gentlemen, in this game franchise, you know? But anyway, pro moving down here, we're about to enter a mini-boss in the next part, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, this enemy right here, that's the force, the, the force bomb thing I told you about. Not, not the best in the world. But yeah, when we return next time, folks, we're going to be taking on a mini-boss and clearing up Rax's Prime. I believe that's the name of this planet. So with that, folks... Thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed. Don't be sheepish. When we return, we'll be doing that. So thanks for watching. I'll see you after. Bye!